Okay, everyone, welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial, so I've had a few requests. I'm going to try to knock out two of them in the same video. Those would be building a wilderness environment and then dealing with elevation or how to make your map have depth. All right, first we need to build our map. So wilderness, it's fairly straightforward. Um, you want to start off with a nice grass back backdrop or something like that. Um, depends what type of season you got. I already have some uploaded in my library, so I'm just going to use this. Fairly simple and standard. Well, if it would work, oh, there it goes. Actually, let me go to map and background and then drag it. There we go. The reason why I do that is, uh, well, obviously, as you can see, if you choose map and background layer, most of the items will be bigger when you drag them onto it. So I'll increase that a little bit more, though. And we'll just copy and paste a few times here. Okay. All done. That part is you know, fairly straightforward. All right, now we want to add things on the map that make it more lively. I have this little thing right here. Um, most of my artwork comes from RPG Mapture. I'll post the link in the description. Just go there, and what you want to look for is something with feathered edges and a transparent background so it blends in real nice like this. Alright, let's see if we can find anything else here. Let's do, we need some trees, right? I have lots of trees. Uh, well, apparently I only have one set of trees and it's they're dead trees. But like I said, transparent background. I'll blow this up a little bit and uh, we want to bring, I'll bring this to the front so it overlays a little bit right there, make it look a little bit better. Alright, so that's what it's looking like right now. Maybe try singular. Okay, there we go. I have a lot of trees. We'll make we'll throw in some of these trees here. Oh, don't want that one. White background. Throw in some dead ones. And some live ones. And then I'll just copy and paste. And we'll plant some down. Here and there. Now, if you want something to come up underneath, um, do not do this. Don't right click it and go to back because I'll send it behind this grass layer and we don't want that. Instead, if you want this dead tree to be, you know, in front of that, instead of clicking this one, you click the dead tree and go to front. And that way, it's nice and overlapping everything. We want to make it kind of crowded in this area. Okay. Um, now, I think we will need something to, well, something that's taller. So let's look for a tower here. We'll just use this now. Uh, old outpost in the middle of the forest. There we go. I will surround, surround it with these trees here. So we have our little, not quite a forest. Let me throw out some more trees. Alright, so this is the start of a decent wilderness map, I suppose. Maybe some secret, uh, like right here maybe a secret tower abandoned outpost or something like that in the middle of the forest and there's like maybe this transportation circle right over here or whatever all right so i will get back to everyone once this is finished add some more realism to the map would you probably want some leaves? So just search for leaves in the marketplace or go to RPG Map Share and uh, try to look for more there. 
and just scatter some down. Now, if you want to make it um, kind of like, you know, video game design, invisible walls or whatever, or kind of have a path, an intended path to, that the PCs will take, just throw down some leaves in a somewhat organized way. As you can see here, maybe they started out over here and now they're following the leaf trail over this way. You know, you can get creative or if you just want leaves all over the place, you can do just that. Just make sure to, after you're done, to set the trees back to the front layer because each new item that you add will uh, be sent to the front, which is probably why it's good to work from the bottom up, but I cannot do that um, for some reason. I don't know why. It's just the thing. So anyways, kind of do this. Looks like a small little wilderness map, I think. Alright, so there you go. That's how you would uh, start on a wilderness map. It's pretty straightforward. Um, now for the second part of this tutorial is height, elevation, how to add depth. Well, one way to add depth is to just get really good tiles. Like this right here, you see it has some shadows and stuff like that. You definitely want something that has drop shadows. Um, and if it's a single or ledge, you can add that in yourself if you have uh, GIMP or Photoshop or some other type of photo editing software. But if you want to add depth in a more in-game like, I created simple tokens because I could not find any. So I'll add a couple of those in here. These will be available for download, by the way. I'll just add plus 20 and a plus 10. Okay, so for these bad boys, we want to set both of these, first of all, to the GM layer. Unless you want your players to see, and that might break them out of the immersion or whatever, you know. So we'll go back to GM overlay, and we can just resize it a little bit. Oop. Make sure to go to advanced is drawing, and resize it a little bit. See there, if I zoom in, you can still see it a little bit. We just want it there to be a little bit, a little reminder. In fact, we are going to actually make, yeah, let's do this. This wood platform area is 20, and then we're going to resize this a little bit. And Actually, let's do this platform stand and this wall is 20. Now, obviously, if you want uh, the reverse, you know, like negative feet, which, you know, feet falling down, you could just do, like, say this was a giant pit in the earth instead of a tower. You could put, like, plus 100 around the ground before the pit, and that would mean that it is a hundred feet above where the pit is uh, falling into. So that's basically it. it's pretty simple. Um, those are the ways that you can add depth to your map and this is how you make a wilderness map and that will be all oh, except for one thing. I'll show you what it looks like as a player. And there we go. As you can see the tokens are not visible to the player because they are on the GM layer. Now, if uh, you can be all smart now as a GM, because if the player asks, well, how high off the ground is this? You can just play, oh, it's 20 feet. Just instantly like that because you have those little tokens right there to remind you how high they are instead of making up some uh, BS number off the bat. And it's good for coming back to maps as well because if you said, oh, it was 100 feet, and then the next time you come back to the map, you go, that's eh, 150 feet. Players remember, okay? 
they remember weird stuff like that so it's just good to have that as a reminder for yourself as well okay I will actually go over a few more tips and tricks in my next video that I'll do at a later time um, until then thanks for watching and I'll see you all later